Hi all, this is Skate, and I want to talk T92 E1. Now I know when I've made my first video after six months, it contained a lot of T92 E1 footage, and one of the questions I was asked the most was, what do I think of Rocket so far? So we spoke about Rocket quite a lot, but I didn't really touch base on the tank in general. It seems to be overshadowed, quite simply, by the amount of discussion on Rockets. Whenever someone talks about this tank, it's rockets, 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 rockets. What do you think of the tank? Rockets. It's literally all I've heard about it. But in my last video, I said I'm not a fan of uh, rockets. I'm just not going to use them as a result. And since that video, I haven't. And I've got to say, wow, what a machine. <laughs> this thing's fantastic. As I mentioned very briefly before, maybe once or twice in several videos, I'm a big fan of the T-49. And this just takes it to another level. Obviously it's tier 9 instead of tier 8, what a dumb thing to say. You know what I mean, it takes it to another level in regards to, it's nutty. Now there are some disadvantages to not using rockets whatsoever. You effectively have no premium ammunition. That could bring in some negatives when you're facing up against big, heavy tanks. But to be honest, I found that the solution is actually very simple. And it's to lean really heavily on the fact that it's a light tank. It has ludicrous mobility. So with that in mind, you can negate the need for premium ammunition, I think, by playing it more like a light tank more like a spotter, more like a hit and runner. Get in, get out type thing. And the gun lends to that just a beautifully. Purely down to the fact of 560 alpha on the APCR, and then obviously heat, we're just going to ignore all the premium ammo. And then 680 alpha on the HE. You can literally pop in, pop out, boom, pretty much. Obviously, respectively, on the APCR, 210 mil of penetration, and on the HE, 90. I think that's more than respectable for the tank's alpha, to be honest. 210. Uh, you could say, if you compare it to other mediums, it's on the low end, except for something like T-54. If you choose the odd gun, you get the 201 mil of penetration. But to be honest, like I said, 210, I don't think it's a struggle. Uh, yeah, you come up against the front of an IS going to be a bit difficult. But if you're in this tank, why are you coming up at the front of an IS-7 in the first place? You shouldn't be, quite simply. You should be, ah, bollocks, that's an IS-7. I'm going to vacate the vicinity right now. You duck in, you duck out. Or, if he's completely secluded, you can circle the hell out of him, have a laugh shooting into his butt every, what, 15 odd seconds. But if that IS is hunkered down, there's no way you should be approaching that thing head on. It should be uh, relocate, reset your camo, and use that blistering mobility to get you round the corner and popping up either behind him or reappear very close to the front of him and swing around him stupidly quickly so there's not a lot he can do to defend himself. But yeah, facing heavy's front on this thing is just a daft thing to do. And I think there's a lovely example in the next replay, actually. Um, sorry, yeah, I should have clarified at the start of this video. Three replays in this video, no rockets as we've said whatsoever, all three masteries going up in damage each time. But the next one, you'll see at the end of the game there is a mouse and there is an IS-7. You can run rings around them all day long. You literally shoot one, you get back over a hill or a dune, and you act like you're buggering off, and then once they turn their attention away, which they will, because what's the point in attempting to chase you? You just come straight back. It, it's, it's a bit cruel, actually. I think so, anyway. But funny. Cruel, but funny we'll go with. There you go. Uh, right, okay, let's... We started talking about the gun rather than we waffle for another ten minutes. I just want to talk a few statistics. I mean, we've mentioned the alpha, but... It's on the low end, you could argue, of DPM, 2,100 if you fire nothing but the APCR, 2,549 in regards to nothing but HE. But obviously you never do nothing 
or all of one or the other. It's a blend. You uh, use HE sometimes, which can obviously boosts your DPM. To be honest, I don't even know why we're talking about DPM. DPM, I think, is genuinely irrelevant in this tank. Because if you are trying to play a DPM war with something, you are entirely playing this thing wrong. I've mentioned already, it is a get in, get out. Once you fired your shot, you've got like 16 second reload. And with a 16 second reload, that is plenty of time to reset your camo. They either think you're running off or you could stay there and just pop back up and do the same thing again. But you are never playing a DPM war with this thing. Never. But obviously it's not just about that. I mean, that big alpha combined with HE makes it very versatile, very friendly. Because yeah, you may not be able to penetrate something like a mouse friendly, but if you want to try and throw them off their shots, you can launch one of these into their track and swing them off slightly sometimes, which can save your bacon. Like that shot, I missed. I hit behind, and it still did 250 splash damage to that poor old waffle. After talking gun stats, you've obviously got to then look at the turret. It's a very low slung turret, a very low slung turret with 10 degrees of gun depression. You make yourself a very hard target as a result. And again, that just adds to the cruel factor on this tank. Not cool, cruel. It is pretty cool though. But yeah, it's just mean. Now you can see here actually, I was looking at the mouse and I was like, ah, oh, heat shell, oh no wait, it's a rocket. I need to just splash him with a sprinkling of HE instead. But yeah, you can see it was default almost that I knew I wouldn't be able to penetrate, so I went to the rockets. Obviously a premium, so yeah. You can see a near, near slip up there, but obviously we didn't slip up in the end. Uh, right, aside from that, let's talk about mobility. 65 kilometers an hour, and you will get there. I mean, engine brake horsepower, 715. That gives you a pretty bonkers power to weight ratio, actually. In fact, I think it's best. I mean, it stuffs the batch out even. Wow. That's why it feels so good. It's the best by quite a margin, actually, on mobility. And I'm not surprised, to be fair. It's also got way better armour than the Batcha. I know we're only talking, like, say, 10 millimetres, but 10 millimetres with sloping like that on the front end. Yeah, that, that, that can make quite a difference. And I've got to be honest, I'm very surprised what sort of ridiculous bounces I've had off this tank. I've genuinely gone, how am I alive? Why am I not dead yet? How did that bounce? Now, I have been told that this thing did receive a nerf. And prior to that, it was even more insane. But still, it's a light tank. And this is one thing, here we go off on tangent, but this is one thing that's cracking me up with Wargaming is... I noticed that they're almost taking away certain light tank features of these tanks to balance the rockets. Which, if you ask me, is illogical, because that then keeps pointing towards uh, the rockets the issue. When this thing really needs to be a light tank, without it being a light tank, it's just squishy target, isn't it? Easy squishy target. It's like I understand in this update coming up, um, the Sheridan is receiving about a 25% loss to its brake horsepower which will affect it quite a bit in terms of mobility. Now, I've just researched that thing, and boy, it is fast. But again, it's a light tank. If it was me, my personal opinion would be delete the rockets and nerf its armor. Why does that thing need such loopy spaced armor on the side? It doesn't, not in any shape or form. That's how I'd balance the light tank, keep its mobility, you go for a light tank for the mobility. And it looks like that mouse was a little bit premature on his trigger finger, so that's just gonna be easy pickings now. Rather than splashing him, I know I can pen the back end of him quite comfortably. So that's what we're gonna do, is use that wicked mobility, come around the back of him, put one in the back. I know sometimes we will penetrate the side at certain scenarios, but it's way more reliable. And again, with that much hit points left, we don't then need to worry about trying to pen, we just put a cheeky HE shot into him. And this is when it comes to the IS-7. IS-7 is distracted with the grill now, which literally means I can come in, help the grill as quick as I can now, by just putting one in his butt. He is going to finish the grill off. 
But he's not going to win in a one-on-one -on -one in this scenario because, yeah, he may get one into me. But I could literally leave this scene within seconds and outspot him, outmaneuver him. There's not a lot he could do there. So, yeah, I need one more shot on him. So I'm going to wait. So, I mean, unless he ammo wrecks me now, there's nothing this IS could do to save himself. I literally do think nothing he could do. He cannot outspot me. He cannot outmaneuver me. He could out DPM me, arguably, but again, if you're playing DPM, you do need that. I think that sums up the tank, really, when you think about it. It's a great spotter. It's a great relocator. It's got phenomenal mobility. It's got a lovely pop up, boom, have that <laughs> type attitude. And I do think all of that is completely overshadowed by the discussion of rockets. I was in a game the other day, and it was a good game, actually. I did well in it. And the amount of abuse I got for just being in this tank was insane. I might put that up for a giggle, because I have recorded it. But it was a good game. I was doing well. And that aside... I just got so much abuse from my own team and from the enemy team just because I was in this tank. And that just cracked me up because literally people hate these things. But even if you just cut the rockets out of this thing entirely, I still think it would be a hell of a mean machine. Bordering on insane. I mean, like, if Wargaming deleted the rockets to this and then I still heard it was receiving another slight armor nerf to make it HE penable reliably, I wouldn't be surprised. I would say it's quite justified, to be honest. And I know there's going to be a big difference of opinion for some people. Some people are going to be like, yep, 100% agree. And others are going to be, nah, this without the rockets is nothing. My opinion, which I think I've said in every single light tank video, there is a skill degree with lights, I think. There's almost a skill cap. I mean, I've seen people go out in T-49s, butcher an entire team, and I sat there and just, wow, look at that. But then you've seen T-49s who just go, I've got mobility, and just YOLO into the enemy team. And you just sit there with the, uh, what the hell was that face on you? Because one of your team just YOLO'd like, like a lunatic. Actually, there's two sides to that, obviously. It's highly amusing, but it's also just a what because you can guarantee that's the same person in chat who goes oh, i went and spotted everyone for you and i died stupid team <laughs> you can guarantee it i think coming back to the skill cap thing i, I do you know what i actually think for very lightly armored tanks is the most important skill by a long shot it's spatial awareness and it's knowing what's around you and knowing the map and knowing what could be around you at certain points I mean, I put up a Stanza B video the other day, and I noticed one of the comments was, ah, oh, this thing's useless, it's a HE magnet. And I got me thinking, yeah, you're right, it is. But if you're letting someone from the other side of the map shoot you flat in the side, you're not paying attention to what you're flying past or what could be available at certain points. Now, I'm not saying you'll never get hit in the side as a result, but if you know there's a bush there, which is, oh, that's a common camping bush, and, hmm, shall I fly past it? Don't risk it. Go spot the bush, or shoot at the bo bush, at the bush? <laughs> shoot a bush. Shoot at the bush first. Those, I think, are the really important things for these sorts of tanks. Or if you're going to fly past it, use some form of cover, like a small dune. Anything you can. Flying around out in the open and going, haha, I'm so fast, I'm not going to get hit, is not the answer. It just won't work. Paying attention to those common spots, trying to work your way around the map to those common sniping spots to try and get people, or when you're in a duel, make sure that there's nothing which could absolutely ruin you. Like, where we are here, as an example, it's often possible for enemy snipers or heavies from across the map at certain angles to get shots in on you if you reverse too far back from where I've sat most of this match. But if you just look at your mini-map every couple of seconds even, you'll see where the enemy heavies are once they're spotted. And until you know they're spotted, don't back out far enough that you could get hit, which you'll notice at the start of that map, I didn't for that reason. 
So yeah, uh, I think light tanks depend solely on spatial awareness and minimap awareness. It's not failsafe, it's not guaranteed, however it massively increases your survival rate. I think that's a good place to cut off this video, otherwise I'm going to end up putting another replay on the end of it to talk longer like I did with my other one. But yeah, T92E1 people, I think it's brilliant. I say that about a lot of tanks because I do enjoy lots of tanks, but this thing's just nutty, even with no rockets included. So yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.